is a technology journalist and an author. Really good to have you with us. We know that even the likes of Elon Musk, who's somewhat of a, a tech evangelist, has warned about the potential dangers of artificial intelligence. And skeptics are fearful that perhaps one day AI could make humans obsolete. Are those fears overblown or is there a real potential for that to happen? The short answer is that we don't really know yet. We are at such a early phase of the AI revolution uh, that it is difficult to know whether or not we will get to so-called AGI, which is a, a very, very small difference in terms of the number of letters, AGI rather than AI, but a fundamental difference in terms of what it means. Artificial general intelligence is the idea of these chatbots, these tools becoming sentient and able to do whatever they want without the controls of humans. Because currently, essentially what this is doing is uh, fulfilling commands that we put in on our own basis and with our own rules. But with the idea of artificial general intelligence, there's this idea of uh, robots starting to kind of take over. And it is previously uh, something that has only been in sort of sci-fi novels, science fiction, but it is as we're seeing an increasing drumbeat of those who look at this, uh, including Jeffrey Hinton, who is kind of one of the fathers of AI, are starting to get a little bit worried about this. Yes, that's right. It is concerning that someone like Jeffrey Hinton is himself warning of the potential dangers of artificial intelligence. So explain to us, what are the potential nefarious purposes in which AI could be used and abused? So one of the obvious ways is that you know the chatbots that we may have used, ChatGPT, uh, in the last six months or so, uh, can essentially be asked to do anything. So uh, academics have already identified that it is possible for scammers to ask it to create phishing emails, ones that essentially pretend to be your bank or your social media platform that you use or, or a close friend, and then ask you to visit a website where you can put in your passwords and then they can steal them from there. This can be done at scale with AI that it can't be done through ordinary humans. So it makes it much easier for those scammers to try out these sorts of techniques. Uh, that is one of the things that you know, Jeffrey Hinton was talking about a little bit in his interview with the New York Times after he left Google. He said that there is a fear that it could be used by criminals. He also said there's a fear that it could be used by malign states, countries like Russia, to essentially sow disinformation uh, in, in Western democracies with the idea of creating a, a sort of artificial wave of content that washes over us and we suddenly change our perceptions, our opinions around things. That is the kind of small scale bit. Then he gets on to the fear that this is actually going to take over and become sentient and thinking for itself. What's called in the terminology the singularity, which is almost like a, a Frankenstein's monster element of things. Once you're actually created this thing, you suddenly become worried about the power it has. And underlying all of this is, is the race for AI supremacy, the, the battle between Google and Microsoft in order to try and develop these tools and, and make the most money from it, because whoever wins this race essentially will set the standards globally. So this is a multi-billion dollar competition and we're all kind of being used here as guinea pigs. We know it took governments across the globe years in order to regulate uh, social media. I mean, they're even playing catch up uh, right now. So do you believe the answer to perhaps reining in the potential negative uh, uses and impacts of AI is for governments right now to consider regulations before uh, the technology really takes off? Absolutely. And this is something that we need to do rather than think about. Uh, we obviously need to make sure that the regulation is right and is very difficult to do so. But as you mentioned, the past 20 years or so of technology and our lack of regulation have shown us what happens if you don't step in early. All of the societal problems that we have that we pinpoint towards technology have been caused essentially by a lack of regulation. So there are Broadly, three areas of thinking around this. The first one is uh, the kind of leave alone approach, don't really regulate too much, which is being put forward by the UK and to a certain extent the US, which is currently consulting with industry and the general public about how it should regulate AI. One of the risks of doing that, of course, is that a consultation takes time yes. and AI moves very quickly. Then we have the EU in the middle, which is uh, deciding to put through an AI act. That looks like it will be put through sort of in June and is relatively interventionist. And then 
on the other end of things, we have China, which is a much more authoritarian state, and they are putting in place lots of AI regulations that are designed to tamp down on any sort of dissent. Obviously, the problem with that is it's not really a replicable model elsewhere in the world. Right. Okay, Chris Stokel-Walker, we'll have to leave it there, but thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us on TRT World.